Hi everybody, today we're going to talk about Lewis dot diagrams, what they are, how they're different than Bohr diagrams or Bohr models, and why scientists use them. So a Lewis dot diagram is a much more simplified and easier to use model than the Bohr model. Um, we're going to start talking about the Bohr model first to understand where the Lewis dot diagram comes from. So with the Bohr model, if we were drawing something like uh, the element nitrogen, we would list the protons and the neutrons in the nucleus of the atom. We do not draw the nucleus, but we draw the electrons in energy levels surrounding the nucleus. And we draw in all of the electrons. So because nitrogen has seven uh, protons, it has seven electrons. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So this is the Bohr model of the atom. We know that this only works through element 18 because the electrons don't actually go around the nucleus like little planets going around the sun. The Lewis dot diagram is simpler. All we do is we write the element symbol in the center of the diagram and we draw in the valence electrons. Valence electrons is a fancy word that means the outer energy level electrons. So nitrogen has five electrons in its outermost ring. That means it has five valence electrons. So we draw them in the same way as we would a, um, the spacing of the electrons in the Bohr model. Okay, here's another example, a Bohr model of the element chlorine. And to draw the Lewis dot structure, or Lewis dot diagram of that, we would write the element symbol, and then only the valence electrons. So that's it. Lewis structures are, you can see, much faster to draw. They are simplified, and they don't include all of the information about the atom. Uh, why scientists use them is because in most cases when we're talking about how elements will interact with each other, what we're most interested in is the valence electrons, how many it already uh, has in its natural structure. And so this is a shorthand way of just looking at the valence electrons, which is what we need for bonding. Another reason that we use them is for quickly uh, finding the valence electrons for elements that we can't draw Bohr models of. So let me show you a shortcut for how we can figure out the valence electrons to draw in the Lewis diagram without first drawing the Bohr diagram. So if you didn't want to draw the Bohr structure, but you still wanted to find the Lewis structure, there's a shortcut using the periodic table. Basically, we need to know how many valence electrons in a family on the periodic table. So there is a pattern. If I were to draw out the Bohr structures for the first 18 elements, I would see a pattern. It would show me that this whole family on the periodic table has one electron in its outermost ring. This whole family here has two electrons in its outermost ring. And this, we skip the middle. So we go one, two, skip the middle, three, four, five, six, seven, and then we say full. So this shortcut quickly helps us to identify how many valence electrons to draw in our Lewis structure. So for example, if I was going to draw calcium, it has two valence electrons. So calcium's Lewis structure would look like that. If I was going to draw bromine, it is in the same family as fluorine and chlorine, so therefore it has seven valence electrons. So I would draw it like this. Briefly, the reason that we say full instead of eight over here is because of helium. Helium uh, is full at two valence electrons, because if you remember in the Bohr diagram, that first energy level could hold maximum two electrons. 
So these elements are already stable, their outer ring is full. Uh, a good way to remember this is if you were a little kid and you were taught to quickly count to 100, you might have said one, two, skip a few, 99, 100. So we can use that same kind of rhyme here. One, two, skip the middle, three, four, five, six, seven, full. So that's the quick way to find how many valence electrons to draw around my Lewis diagram. Here's an image of a Bohr diagram periodic table. You can notice that in the first family on the left-hand side, there are one electron in the outer ring, or one valence electron, and then it goes two for beryllium's family, skip the middle, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, or full. Really, you can't say eight, full. Have a great day. Teachers, if you are interested, there are several assignments related to this in the video description below.